All right, there are some questions about demand functions. What is a demand function? So this is, well, two examples of the demand functions. Really the same function, just written in different ways. And so the, this top one you can read as the quantity of x that's demanded is equal to a function, some function of these different variables. And so uh, px is the price of good x. That's that's the, the good in question here. So we're, this demand function shows the quantity of good x being demanded. So it's its own price. And then we've got the price of two other goods, two related goods. The py, the price of y, and pz, the price of good z. Uh, and we're going to assume here that y is a complement to z, to, sorry, y is a complement to x, and z is a substitute for x. Uh, and then two other things that will influence the quantity being demanded of x are the income, and that's represented with M, and then H is advertising, so how much advertising is being conducted or, or how much advertising money is being spent on, on uh, pushing product X. So another way to write that, this, this tells you that all of these things, all of these variables influence the quantity of, of X that's being demanded. It doesn't really show you the, the relationship as closely as, as this demand function. Again, same demand function, just kind of written a different way. And here, we've got the, the quantity of X is being demanded, and that's equal to some constant, some unknown constant, represented with alpha zero. Right? What's that constant? I don't know. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, and then we've got the, the price of, of X. Remember, we said the price of X is going to influence the, the quantity of X that's being purchased. But this alpha tells us the amount, the direction, how much the price influences the quantity of X being purchased. Uh, and, and really, what it, the most important thing that it tells us is, is the sign on this alpha is going to tell us the, the effect that P of price of X has on the quantity of X. And we know from the, the law of demand that as the price of X goes up, so as, as this PX gets bigger, that the quantity of X demanded is going to decrease. Right? So we know there's a negative relationship here between the price of X and the quantity of X uh, being demanded. And so what does that tell us about this, this alpha, and, and more specifically the sign on that alpha? And the sign on that alpha should be negative. So, so alpha x, I don't, I don't necessarily know what it's going to be, um, but I know it's going to be, I know the value is going to be negative. Right? Because as p goes up, sorry, the price of x, px goes up, the quantity of x is going to decrease. As the price of x goes down, the quantity of x is going to go up. But then we can look at py. Again, we don't necessarily know what the value of this alpha is. We know there's some relationship between PY, the price of Y, and the quantity of X that we're going to consume. Uh, but, but we have a little bit of information here where we made this assumption that Y is a complement to good X, right? So we're going to consume these two things together at the same time. Um, so hamburgers and hamburger buns. Uh, Rum and Coke, uh, cars and automobile. Uh, sorry, cars. Cars and automobiles and gas. Uh, gas and tires. Maybe is a better example. Right, we're going to consume these things together. So if all of a sudden um, hamburger buns start getting really, really expensive, what's going to happen to our consumption of of hamburgers? Right? What's well, going to decrease? So if if this complement, if if the price of rum goes way up, we're going to consume a lot less. Coke, right? So those those are going to be uh, they're going to have a, a, a negative relationship between the price of Y and the quantity of X that's being demanded. And so this also this that negative relationship can be shown here, right? So that the value, the influence that the price of Y is going to have on X is shown here. So so uh, alpha Y is going to be negative. Now, if it's a very, if it's a higher impact, if, if the price of Y is going to have a significant impact 
on the, on the quantity of X being consumed, then the value of this would be, well, it would be, it would be the, the absolute value would be much greater. It would be a much larger number, right? It would always be a negative number, though. Contrast that with the alpha Z. Right, what's the value of this alpha Z? Well, we've got here that Z is a substitute for X, right? And so if, uh, if, X is, if X is Coke, then Z is Pepsi, right? So they're substitutes. You either consume one or the other. And what happens if, if Pepsi gets really cheap? Right? Well, if, if the price of Pepsi drops, if they're giving away Pepsi for free, how much Coke are you going to buy? Not very much because you're going you're gonna to get the Pepsi instead. And so if the price of Pepsi falls, if we see a decrease in the price of Pepsi, what's going to happen to the, the quantity of Coke being consumed? Well, that should also fall. Right? So, so these two, PZ and, and QX, should be re directly related. So the value on this alpha Z should be positive. Pick, a, pick another, you can pick plenty of, uh, of substitutes and try to go through that example. Well, if the price of the substitute goes one way, what's going to happen to the consumption of the, the other product? And they should move in, in the same direction. Again, remember this is the price of one good and this is the quantity of the other good. And then the last two, M, income, and so if this is a normal good, right, and, and the, we make more money, what should the sign be on, on the alpha M? Well, if we're making more money, our income is going up, and it's a normal good, we're going to buy more of the product. So alpha M should be positively related. Again, if assuming it's a normal good. If it's an inferior good, if this is ramen noodles, then as our income goes up, right, then we're going to buy less uh, ramen noodles, and thus the, uh, the, the sign on alpha M would be negative, right? And then advertising, the last one, if, if we're spending more money on advertising, our H is going to get larger, and as H gets larger, we would expect more product to be sold, and so that, the sign on alpha H should also be positive. Hope that clears up some of our confusion for the demand curves.